last one then. So we had uh, uh, Jack Kelly um, at Frosty Irish one. I know Jack's a, a Man United fan, so he's asked about United. Because um, I did say ask about anything. It doesn't have to be Liverpool. So maybe it's a nice place to finish on on, uh, <laughs> on United. Uh, so from where they were to where they are now, what's gone wrong at Man United and what do they need to do to fix it? The team that seemed a midfielder away from challenging the league looks to need so much again. And what are your thoughts on Ralph? Um Boy, it's a good question, isn't it? I'd like to talk about Man United a lot more because there's, there's just there's so much going on there. Um, I think they've gone backwards and I think they did that mainly because um, too much too soon. I, I don't know if, if I, like the signings they made, they didn't really complement the team. Um, Varane is obviously a great defender, but he's not the defender. He's not going to defend the box the way Man United did, you know, to counterattack the way they were last season where... Uh, Maguire and, and uh, Lindelof are really good at that. Varane is different. He's proactive. He's a he's a centre back who you know goes and wins Champions Leagues with loads of possession. He's just not that player. Uh, Sancho, yeah, he does fit. He, Sancho did fit, and I, I can understand why they wanted him earlier. He does fit the counter attacking, super fast, you know, incisive football, and we're starting to see that come good at the minute. He's playing much better now uh, than he did. Um, but he's very young. A lot of pressure on him. Playing at Man United is a different. It's a different monster to to, to Borussia Dortmund. Um, he, suddenly, you've got all this scrutiny on you, and you're just a kid. Um, I can understand why he started a bit slowly, Sancho. And then Ronaldo just made absolutely no sense. They signed him because Man United wanted, Man City wanted to rather. Um, they didn't want to be shown up by City. It was a commercial deal, and this essentially is the problem at Man United. Is uh, something I've said on Twitter a few times. Is you've got commercial managers you've got investment bankers you've got marketing directors making football decisions if you're buying a player it doesn't matter who it is it doesn't matter if it's cristiano ronaldo or uh, christopher biggins if you're buying if you're buying a player imagine chris biggins up front for man united might do better job than, than ronaldo if you're buying a player it has to make sense for the team a manager has to have direct input in which players are being brought in i imagine if they said to Oli Solskjaer, oh, we want to buy Ronaldo, what do you think? Solskjaer would have said, obviously, you know, get him in, he's great. But it didn't make sense tactically. There was far too much motivation there. Um, uh, that, far too much of that was motivated by things that weren't affected for the team. Crying out for a, for a defensive midfielder. Oh, let's sign, let's sign Ronaldo. The opposite of what they needed. They had uh, Mason Greenwood. Obviously, that's different now. Big problem there. Don't know if he'll ever play for the team again. But in the summer... They had Mason Greenwood. They had Edinson Cavani. Um, two players who can occupy a centre forward position. Very different players, but they could do it. Why not? They they brought in Ronaldo just because it was Ronaldo, and that that is the problem. Man United is is that was not a football decision. And this is the problem: is you've got people who don't care or know about football making decisions about a football club, and that's because Man United aren't really a football club anymore. It's a brand. It's just, you know, they're floating on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, Jurgen Klopp said it was like an adult version of Disneyland when he spoke to them uh, years ago. And I think that's probably accurate. It's it's all, it's just, it, it's not. The football isn't at the front of their priority list anymore. Under Ferguson, it was. Under Fergie, it was all about the football. Everything revolved around the first team. Ferguson controlled everything. Nowadays, that that's not there anymore. They've got, people making decisions that I don't know they just they, they don't know the first thing about what it takes to to win a game of football at the top level um, so it's all a mishmash of bad decisions um, and this is where they're at so essentially the, the the reason why they went from looking you know promising to complete capitulation and regression is because football is really complex um, you can't just put good players together and expect them to perform you need a greater plan you need you need uh, proper leadership and motivation uh, I don't think Solskjaer is a particularly good manager. I think he did well under the circumstances, but I felt like he he brought in he was a good motivator. I think um, Solskjaer. I think he brought in a culture of that that made the players happy and confident and uh, at ease, and they excelled in that, especially under the circumstances around COVID with empty stadiums and um, it was all a bit, you know, it wasn't as tense. I would say it was a bit more relaxed, and I think I think Solskjaer um, really really garnered that culture um, and allowed them to thrive under that 
uh, but they they once you got the fans back, once the pressure started to build, once there was a lot more pressure on the team because they'd finished second, they'd reached cup final. Um, he thought, well, now, now it's time for us to win another another cup, you know, to do well to challenge Man City. Once that expectation was back, um, plus the, the you know Old Trafford is full of fans again, away's away away grounds are full of fans again. Um, that pressure mounted and suddenly the relaxed happiness that the players had um, turned into anxiety and nerves and, um, you know, general sort of the, the negative side of that. Um, so it didn't work anymore. The defending, you know, the, the way they defended really well before, um, they've started to make mistakes. Somebody, Maguire, the difference in Harry Maguire from last season to this season is amazing. They look like two different players. You You had players losing their place. You had um, big weaknesses in defensive positions in midfield, especially because they didn't bring anybody in. You've got somebody like Matic is a year older and he's, you know, he's too old to cover those kind of spaces now. And then you've got Cristiano Ronaldo, who's a force of nature on, him, on his own. He gets all the attention. Suddenly Rashford, Greenwood, um, and Bruno Fernandes, they're, they're no longer the main men. They're now in the shadow of this gargantuan, brand that is cr7 um it was a bad 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 recruitment decisions and bad um the the culture wasn't prepared f- to deal with that pressure partly because of what Solskjaer created i think um he, he he needs to take a bit of the blame for that because um i feel what he the culture he created was good at winning points especially from bad positions penalties are uh, very fast football um overturning late you know um sort of you know coming back from 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 a bad position late in the game it was all very exciting and very very uh intense but it wasn't sustainable it wasn't strong it was always a fragile position to be in. You shouldn't need to do that. And I felt that was what Solskjaer created. And essentially, he's not hes not a world-class manager. He, he had some really good players. He did really well in ways. You know, he, he, he I think he was a good motivator. And he, he, he was a friend of all the players. And he made them happy, which is goes a long way in this game. But uh, when things get, you know, when things get tough, I don't think he had the answer to it. And it makes sense because he never had the experience to manage Manchester United. A bit like Lampard at Chelsea. They don't have the experience. And there's a lot more to football management than just, you know, picking players and, you know, formations and where to stand on the pitch. You've got to manage everybody individually. You've got to have a long-term plan. You've got to handle expectations and pressure. I don't think Solskjaer was ever equipped for that. No surprise whatsoever that he was he was on his ass. A very difficult decision to make because the the board, you know, once you've got a man like again similar to Lampard, once you've got a, a you know a, a, a hero in charge uh, who was a great player for the club, it becomes hard to dismiss them um, because of the popularity among fans. Although I'd say quite a lot of fans wanted him out by the end, especially after the Liverpool result. Um, it's not an easy decision to make, and then they left it quite late. There's no contingency plan. Ralph Rangnick's brought in, who's not really a manager i don't really understand I me mean, i can get the the idea he's going to be an advisor or whatever he's there to understand the problems theoretically long term that's a great decision but it uh, he's not going to win you know the, the team's going to struggle in the meantime i've said if they drop out of europe it's probably a good thing they could lose players get gets uh, quite a lot of players off the books at man united um, do what arsenal did with arteta get rid of all of these big names get the wage bill cleared um Get rid of Cristiano Ronaldo for fuck's sake. He he doesn't need to be there. He's it's just a payday for him and for uh, Jorge Mendes. There's no need for him. Um, uh, champion the youth again. Greenwood is an issue. Greenwood is a big issue. And I've I've tried not to speak about him too much on social media because you know I don't like to to to, to mention these you know people that are, that are associated with these kinds of things. It's not football. Um, but he signalled. Um, before all of that shit was known, he signalled a real bright future for United. Him, Rashford, um, and then you've got the younger players like Alanga. You've got uh, James Garner, I really like. You've got Hannibal uh, Mybury, good players. Ango uh, Gomez left. He was really good too. You've got some real, real strength in the youth, minus Greenwood now. So that was a big problem for him. He's probably not going to be involved now, but he signalled this. They, they have the quality there. And they have the means to champion that quality and to pay them what they deserve, you know, and to, to put them in the in the forefront. Um, 
but they're not getting a chance. Um, and I think that's mainly maybe because um, perhaps the manager isn't confident in them. First thing first, they need to bring in a long-term manager. Obviously, it's easier said than done mid through, mid, midway through the season. There's not much you can do. Um, so this is what I'd like to see from them is a uh, long-term manager. They have to have that identified. If that's not already identified and agreed for the end of the season, I'll be, I'll be surprised. Well, I should be surprised. I probably wouldn't be because Man United make bad decisions. But that's the way they should do it. They should have a manager identified, four-year contract, get him on board now, make sure his plan is the thing that is being um, promoted and pushed. Ed Woodward, no, it's not even Ed Woodward now, but these these people in charge, the directors, the marketing managers, the the shareholders, they they have they should have no impact on the team. If they want the team to do well, they need to just shut up and stop getting involved. You have to have the managers. You have to have um, so the manager and his coaches, the coaching staff, that needs to be the center of the team. They have their recruitment plans. Go and get these players. If you can't get them, go and get these players. This is what we need to succeed. Um, and then that needs to be promoted. So I would get rid of pl plenty of players. I'll the likes of Donny van der Beek, they, they need to come back into the team. Rashford needs to be championed. Um, Bruno Fernandes is obviously a, a very important player. Um, and I would say he's a good example of what they need to focus on is this, this drive and determination plus technical ability. They need to lose all of this lethargy that you get with other members of the team, players that are obviously just happy to play for Man United and get paid a massive wage every week. You need fighters in the team again. Um, this is something they've lost. So there has to be a big change around in who gets the say on the football side of things. That's basically all there is to it. Long-term plan, loads of changes in personnel and support the people who are employed to make these decisions, people who know them. Eric Ten Hag would be a good good shout. He's done such a good job at Ajax. Um, I think he should be possibly, you know, try and get him if you can. Um, but then stick with him, you know, ride out. It's going to be difficult. You have to back them. You have to ride out the, the storm that was created by, in no short part, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Sorry to say it. I know he's a legend at United, but he's caused problems because of the culture he, he created. Um, and the way that those, you know, the, 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 it's kind of a, it was a really weak foundation, that success that he had. Um, so in short, I mean, I've, I'm going on a lot. I mean, I could talk about Man United all day because there's just so much there to go through. Um, in short, in short, Jack, I think, um, the problems I've gone through again, um, partially Solskjaer, partially the board, um, they created something that wasn't sustainable. Um, how far are they away from being, so what do they need to do to fix it? They'd have to focus on a good experienced manager, support him, back him, um, give him the funds or give him the, you know, the players he wants essentially. Um, and they, they have to start putting the football first again. Um, they cannot, board members cannot be making decisions for the football club. I don't think you get that. You know, no successful club do they do that. Any any time a manager gets a player that they don't see fitting into the team, that player doesn't succeed there because the you know the manager's the one who's supposed to be directing him. It doesn't work. Have to put the football first. Um thoughts thoughts on Ralph. Um I think he's gonna be very good maybe as a director of football or you know this advisory position he's been offered. Um, that's where his strengths are. He's not a football manager. I mean, he's, he's done bits and pieces for Leipzig. Um, he hasn't been a football manager really since Hoffenheim. That was, what, 2009, I think, in his last season, 2010. Um, he's there to understand the issues. So if, if, if they listen to him after this season, a season which, you know, they might even be better off dropping out of Europe because um, they need so much change. It'll be easier to offload players that aren't up to scratch if they drop out of Europe. That will be when Rangnick's strengths really come to the front. I wouldn't judge him as a manager. I'd judge him as a as a maybe you could call it like a general manager, a manager of the of the oversight, a director basically. Think about what directors of football usually do. Um, that's what Rangnick should be doing. Um, and they need to need to bring in the right man. I would get Ten Hag. Honestly, you'd do worse than a million other managers in the Premier League, like Graham Potter would be a good shout. Pochettino, I know people are fond of him. He's a good manager. No problem with that at all. Um, 
I, I would I would consider Graham Potter. Honestly, I would talk to him about it. Um, I think there's a lot of managers that if you give them the resources Man United have, and if you give them the backing, and if you lose all of the bullshit prejudice about where the manager's from or which team he's managed in the past, um, I think you'd be surprised with how successful they are. If you consider what, what Solskjaer did at Cardiff and compare it to what Potter has done at Brighton. Potter is miles ahead of Solskjaer. But Solskjaer gets the job because he scored a winner against Bayern Munich or whatever. That's the sort of shit they need to stop stop making, you know, stop making decisions based on stuff like that. It's, they're trying to appease fans who, you know, with all due respect, don't know anything about football management either. Who cares if Solskjaer was a good player for Man United? It makes no difference to their management. Likewise, um, you think about how... Um, what it is to be a manager it has to be long term it cannot just be sign players hope they win games you know they have to bring in a culture they have to they have to get players on board with their ideas so it needs to be long term even if even if they're shit for two years that's just the way it is man united are going to make money either way they're always going to be able to compete financially because of their commercial reach they can drop out of the champions league or out of the uefa cup for two for the europa league for, for two years if they have to um look over at arsenal that that's the model they should be following because they, they they've gone through similar similar um, episodes over the years, um, Man United and Arsenal. So that that's what they should look at. I think, um, yeah, I could make a, I could talk for an hour on this alone, Jack. It's a really good question. Um, I, I think I might record something on Man United eventually.